um, yeah, mirror neurons, not many animals have them. I mean, we have them far and away the most. There are apparently some mirror neurons and some other primates, but <clears throat> nothing like what we have. And the idea was that we were trying to pick up on um, somebody else's, in a hierarchy, their behavior. You know, are they, you know, is that really favorable to me or unfavorable? Is she going to throw me out of the tribe because she's the alpha female and I think I'm, I may not have done the best thing with her, my antagonized her some way. You're screwed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it, if you throw out a tribe, you know, yeah. you're gone. You perish. And so, you know, the idea was to, okay, can I interpolate my experience into I watch her behavior and try to mirror this back and understand it in a way that I can guess what theory of mind now, what's going on in her mind. We don't ever really know. We just have this uh, algorithm set running that these actions, those motions, make me believe I know what she's thinking. But in fact, I don't really know, but I can approximate. And they're good enough for government work, as it were. They're good. They're good enough to uh, be probabilistically favored in social life. Yeah, probabilistically favored. Yeah. You know, it was, we people believe they can read others' minds through this stuff, and um, that works sometimes. But you got to make sure you have the same algorithms running in your mind that they do in their mind. I knew you were going to say that. I mean, <laughs> 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 or at least I thought I did. Because, because there's a presumption that oh, all of the all minds work alike. And yeah. that we know all minds don't work alike, and some people may run, be running a completely different operating system, mm -hmm. and so you can you can predict behavior of a, you know somebody, and be completely wrong. I mean, one of the great lines is you know they ask from Maharshi, can how can you tell if somebody's awakened or not? These are the words, but in the context of South India, he said, well you can't tell, because well I look at his actions and he believes he w w acts this way and that way, so he must must be or must not be. He said, can't tell. Mm. You can't tell that way at all. Actions are no predictor. So our mirroring behavior, the neurons would tell us, well, we can see from their actions what they must be thinking. And he's saying, I think we thought the same thing, is that you can't do that because the actions have really no reflection of what's going on inside if there's really nothing going on inside. Well, what's so interesting about that is then the way you, uh, you know, describe mirror neurons here it describes why it is that we don't feel like our own our consciousness is our own. Mm. In other words, that it encourages us to think that there is a kind of space of common consciousness, consciousness and consciousness is outside of us, mm -hmm. right? I mean, in fact, it's very telling that Ramana Maharshi would say, well, you can't tell, mm -hmm. because if you could tell, there would be something other than this experience of the pure field of awareness mm -hmm. that we are, mm -hmm. rather than feeling like there's this field of awareness over here that knows that field of awareness right. over there. Right. So part of the hump I find in uh, you know just talking and working with people and uh, teaching and just in dialogue is getting to the point where you break that habit of simply understanding one's own consciousness through the mirroring in another consciousness. Because it's not just that we're trying to guess at another's consciousness, but that that loops. Mm -hmm. That our own consciousness becomes now, after a while, nothing but the guessing after mm -hmm. the consciousness of another, mm -hmm. never experiencing the capacity that is there underneath mm -hmm. to be conscious at all. Mm -hmm. So um, that, that's very interesting because it explains uh, how it is that consensus reality becomes so powerful mm -hmm. in this kind of primate culture that we live in. Well, but we are heavily, you know, as you well know, lemmingly like uh, in, bred that way. Oh, I agree we, with we, you. Yeah, we, <laughs> we evolutionarily, <laughs> Darwinianly adapted so that we could be together and cooperate. And the mirror neurons helped us cooperate right. because you know I, I I know what they're thinking. We, she wants to do this, one. so we we learned how to cooperate. Mm -hmm. And the ones that cooperated best survived the best. Mm -hmm. The ones that had the highest organizational structure and societal coherence were more successful. And so we eventually bred that into our species. And now we see somebody has a very different consciousness, a very different operating system. We still believe they exactly think like we do. That it is you know group mind, but it is not group mind. 
And then when there's evidence that uh, they don't think like we do, we, we begin building a pyre. <laughs> and, and we put them on there. <laughs> Somebody, somebody's heard them. <laughs> exactly. Um, no, but it's very interesting because it says, okay, now we're in this point of the evolution of consciousness where we know about mirror neurons. Yeah. And we can be aware that that's a beautiful thing, yeah. that we're here because we've been able to cooperate better than starlings and cheetahs mm -hmm. and right. jaguars and bears. Right. Uh, but that doesn't mean that's who and what we are. Right. Like we, we sometimes make this mistake through our mirroring mm -hmm. that we understand ourselves entirely through right. reference to this external validation system, which interestingly enough is never really a validation because no. what's being mirrored Right. is always second order. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm responding to the, the, the guessing of my guessing and okay. their guessing right. and so exactly. on. So if we can turn our consciousness around and say, yes, okay, I appreciate my ability to heuristically guess at the role of the alpha male or the alpha mm -hmm. female or mm -hmm. any of the subdivisions of that that exist in our corporate right. uh, world and say, okay, but what about the condition of consciousness that allows me to do that? Mm -hmm. and spend time with that primary mm -hmm. pure consciousness, mm -hmm. then it's no problem that there's this thing called mirroring, right. but we don't fall for it in the same way. Right. Right. And this really helps me because it helps explain how it is I can hang out in a meeting, meeting mm -hmm. for example, and sit there and not do any of that anymore, mm -hmm. where I'm sitting there trying to guess mm -hmm. how the other person is responding, mm -hmm. and I just... And present. Mm -hmm. And in being present, inevitably, there's a better outcome, mm -hmm. even though there's nobody there going, okay, and then when they say this, I'm going to say that. Right. Right. Because that is second, third, fourth, nth order right. response to reality, right. whereas just being present is asymptotically reality. Well, as you point out, being, being a meeting, if you're completely empty, you're not participating yourself in this game of back and forth, back and forth, you know, I, I understand myself through her reaction to me, yeah. you're there, yeah. present, 100% yeah. fully just there now, and you can see their dances going on, but you're not pulled into any of the dances, you're just sitting there in stillness, and it's so much, not we're going after power, but it's so much more powerful to be in your own clarity, your own space, without being dependent upon anybody else to set up for you what you should be thinking. It's a very different way to operate. Right, and, and which you eventually think is you. Yeah. Like, the, the way other people are setting you up to think, you yeah. then say, well, that's my agenda. Hmm. Even though it's based on this yeah. bizarre exactly. uh, mirroring practice. Exactly. And so then you wonder why when you get what you want, this it wasn't very satisfying, was it? <laughs> well, it goes on, it goes on, it goes on, it goes on, it yeah. never stops. But if you can step out of it, and I think that's some of the resistance people have when they go into this work and start to say, well, can I... Can I do this? Can I step out of this process of being in this continuous reflective, reflective relationship with everything else around me? The sense is yes, it's a very surprisingly sweet place to be because you are not sucked into that. What does he or she think of me continuously? Because everybody's doing the same process. Right, because if we were in that situation of just guessing what the other person thinks of me, mm -hmm. we never experience dialogue. No. Not really. No, there, there's not time. Like, <laughs> it's a recursive monologue. <laughs> exactly. A recursive monologue, but who's speaking it? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, this this uh, this meditation on mirror neurons then can be very useful because yeah. it can allow us to sort of like, you know, give thanks, you know, sort of render under Caesar that which is Caesar's, render under consensus reality that it right. that which is consensus reality. But we're not going to grow, we're not going to get anywhere if all we're involved in is this endless feedback loop between yeah. guesses at, at who the other person, yeah. at what the other person is approving of. With what you touched on earlier too, how can you possibly be creative, really creative, if you're hooked in these recursive mirroring loops? Yeah. You've got to get, step out of that and be in an own new, clear, empty space to have any chance to be truly creative. And it, it can arise out of that creates clarity. If not that, you're just nothing but a bunch of mirrors, mir literally mirrors, yeah. mirroring each other back and forth. How can you get anything creative out of that? Yeah, you're lost in the funhouse. You're no fun. lost in the funhouse. You don't even know where yeah. the mirrors are. They're every place. 
and there's no space for love because no. then you're never actually responding exactly to another person exactly yeah. you're, you're, you're responding to this kind of mediated display that yeah. got us through being a social animal right but now we know about that exactly. so we're aware you so can we step can step away from it then. yeah